Hi, uh, this video is for Luisa, who has some questions about the universe. Um, so there are five questions, uh, and I'm going to try and answer them, but not in order. So the questions are, when will the universe end? When did the Big Bang? Which is the closest black hole? How many black holes are there? And then what are black holes made of? So I'm going to start with question two. So question two is, when did the Big Bang? Uh, so the Big Bang was something that happened uh, that sort of created the universe we see today, or, or what we really think of when we talk about the Big Bang as astronomers, cosmologists, is the fact that in the early universe, the very beginning, the universe was hotter and denser than it is today. So think about, you know, the universe is full of galaxies and a bunch of empty space, stars, gas, stuff like that. And right now we can see that those things, everything is kind of moving away from each other. All the galaxies are getting farther apart. And so we can see that since the universe is expanding today, at some point, everything was closer together. And so we can kind of extrapolate back. We can think back, you know, send that backward in time and say, if galaxies are moving apart today, then in the beginning, they must have been closer together. And so you come up with this idea that the early universe, in the beginning, everything was very, very dense. Everything was kind of together. Um, and, you know, the universe was like hot and dense and sort of crowded. Right. And so we can we can kind of extrapolate back to when everything would have been really, really hot and really dense. And we get the idea that um, that the universe started in some kind of hot, dense state. Now, whether it started as a kind of infinitely dense point that's called a singularity, we, we don't know. We do know that the universe was hot and dense in the beginning because we can actually see that radiation from that hot, dense phase of the universe. We can see that there is all this radiation left over, this afterglow of when the universe was hot and dense, and you know, then it sort of expanded and cooled down. But an important thing about that is that everywhere was hot and dense. So the whole universe was hot and dense. It wasn't just like a single point and everything expanded from that. Everywhere was hotter and denser than it is today. Um, and so anyway, we can figure out based on how quickly the universe is expanding now and kind of dialing everything back, we can figure out that that happened, that hot, dense state was about 13.8 billion years ago. So exactly what happened before that hot, dense state, like how we got that, we don't know for sure. But we do know that it was somewhere around 13.8 billion years ago that that was the sort of situation in the universe. Okay. So the next question I'm going to answer is, when will the universe end? Uh, now, we don't know. We don't know for sure. Um, there are a few different ways the universe might end. Um, I just finished writing a book about that called The uh, the End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking. Um, but the most likely thing is that as the universe is expanding now, it'll keep expanding and it's it's speeding up as it's expanding. And so over time, galaxies are going to get farther apart. Everything is going to get a lot cooler and darker and things will kind of just fade away. And that'll take a really long time uh, for everything to really, really fade away. We we think that probably in about 100 billion years, it'll be impossible to see galaxies beyond our little local group of galaxies. So all these amazing galaxies that like the Hubble Space Telescope are seeing, we're not going to be able to see those anymore. We won't be able to see even the afterglow of the Big Bang anymore after about 100 billion years. But then after that, you know, stars will kind of die out and everything will get really dark and cold. And that whole process takes an unimaginably long time. So it's kind of hard to put a number on that. Um, you know, trillions and trillions and trillions of years, um, maybe 10 to the 100 years before, you know, stars really stop working anymore and stuff like that. But it's, it's going to be a very long time. So probably that's what's going to happen. Um, but there are a couple other possibilities. Um, you know, it's possible that whatever's making the universe expand faster and faster could be some kind of new thing in the universe that could kind of tear it apart eventually. Um, we don't know when that would happen either, but it would be billions and billions of years in the future if it did happen. Um, something like 200 billion years, at least more than that, probably. And then there are other possibilities, including... Uh, something called vacuum decay, where you get this like bubble of expanding, uh, the bubble of like a different kind of space expanding through the universe. And that could happen kind of any time, but it's very, very unlikely um, to happen any time in the next like 
10 to the 500 years. So, so, you know, way, 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 way longer from now than any time we can even think about. Um, so yeah, so there are a few different ways it can happen, a few different time scales on those, but, um, you know, not, not anything we'd have to think about within billions and billions and billions of years, um, most likely. Okay, uh, then there are a couple other questions about black holes. Um, one of the questions is, what is the closest black hole? Uh, so probably the, the one that's currently thought to be the closest is called A0620-00, um, or V616 Monstratis. Um, it's, it's a black hole and a star orbiting each other. Um, the star is kind of orbiting the black hole. The black hole is something like six and a half times as massive as our sun, but, you know, small because it's a black hole, so it's much more compact. And the star orbiting it is a K-type star, which is a star that's somewhere around half as massive as our sun, and it's sort of a shining star, just the usual type. But because it's orbiting this black hole, and it's orbiting very, very quickly, it's going around in something like eight hours, um, it's very close to the black hole, and so the gravity of the black hole is stretching it out. So the star is sort of like elongated, and it's losing some of its atmosphere to the black hole. So the reason we know this is happening is because we can see the radiation from when that the stuff from that star is like swirling around the black hole and, and falling into it. So it's it's very cool. Um, but yeah, so that one's somewhere around three three and a half thousand light years away. Um, the distance is a little bit uncertain, but that's probably the closest one. Uh, and then the next question is, how many black holes are there? Uh, there are a lot. <laughs> so uh, one thing that we have learned is that every sort of sizable galaxy in the universe that we've observed has a supermassive black hole in the center. Our galaxy has one. It's called, uh, it's called uh, Sagittarius A star. It's A with an asterisk. Um, and uh, that one is around 4 million times as massive as our sun, and it's just sitting in the center of the galaxy. There's a bunch of stars orbiting around it. All big galaxies seem to have these black holes, these supermassive black holes in the centers, and they're not dangerous or anything. Like, if, you're, if your star gets really close to them, it could fall in, it could get ripped apart. That's kind of a neat thing. But, like, from out here, we're very far from our, our supermassive black hole, and it doesn't is not gonna like pull us in or anything like that. Um, but they just kind of hang out in the centers of galaxies because the sort of the galaxy mass is highest in the center and kind of that's where the black hole ends up settling and black hole, supermassive black holes and galaxies sort of seem to grow up together. And there's, we're still kind of figuring out exactly how that works, but it does seem to be that most big galaxies have supermassive black holes in the centers. And we're still trying to figure out if the smaller galaxies also have black holes in the centers, like intermediate mass black holes. So when we say supermassive, we mean millions of, ma of times as massive as the sun, usually around there. Um, there may be black holes that are a thousand times as massive as the sun in smaller galaxies. We're, we're still not sure about that. Um, but yeah, so there's these supermassive ones that are in all the big galaxies out there. So, you know, billions and billions of those out there in other galaxies. And then there are black holes that are um, the remnants of stars. So there's a question that you asked, uh, what are black holes? What is black hole made of? Right. And a black hole is it's really just it's the it's what happens when a star collapses on itself. So when you have a really massive star, much more massive than the sun, when it runs out of fuel, when it can't burn anymore, it can collapse on itself and become a black hole. Basically what happens is that usually when a star is shining, the, the, the burning of the fuel inside, the sort of the stuff that makes the star shine is kind of keeping it puffed up. Um, uh, but then when, the, when that, those processes can't happen anymore, when you don't get that shining anymore, when the nuclear processes inside the star can't work anymore, um, that star can collapse on itself from its own gravity. So it doesn't have that radiation to puff it up anymore. It could collapse. And that's how a black hole is made. And what happens is there's there's no force known to nature that can make keep the, the matter from, from just collapsing to the center, to a single point in the center. We call it a singularity. Now, when that happens, when that collapse occurs, there, it, it sort of collapses space and matter so much that there's a region around the black hole called the event horizon, a sort of invisible board, border boundary, spherical boundary around the black hole, where if you go past that boundary, 
you can never come out again. And that also means that whatever's happening inside that boundary, we can't see it. We don't know exactly what's happening. We can infer, we can guess that what's happening is that the matter is all collapsing to a single point that we call a singularity, but we don't really know for sure. Um, so what a black hole is made of is it's kind of made of all the stuff that fell in, you know, but also because all that stuff collapses into a singularity, we don't, we don't really know, like, we can't really call that matter anymore. It's sort of just space that's, that's scrunched up together. So anything that's really massive in the universe pulls space in together, like collapses around itself, curves it around itself. And that's what a black hole is made of. So getting back to how many black holes are there, whenever a really massive star dies, certain kinds of massive stars, they can leave black holes as remnants. And so and some of these black holes that are left as remnants have other stars orbiting around them, like this one that I mentioned before, the nearest one. And so we know of, you know, like dozens of those in our own galaxy, and um, those would be somewhere around the, the masses of stars, hundreds even of those in our own galaxy, and other galaxies have them too. And we can usually see them because they create X-ray radiation as the stuff is falling into the black hole from this other star. But then, you know, some stars don't have companions, don't have other stars orbiting them. And so when they become black holes, we might not see that at all. And so they might just be sort of invisible out there because there's nothing falling into them to make them bright. So, you know, there are a lot of black holes. Um, they're not dangerous unless you get close to them. So, you know, don't be afraid of black holes. I don't, uh, a lot of people think of them as these like really dangerous things, but usually um, they're just kind of, they're, they're only affecting their really local neighborhood. Um, and they do cool things, and we and because they often have things falling into them, we can see them from far away. They they end up being really bright, and that allows us to learn more about how stars live and die, and learn about what's going on in the centers of galaxies. And it's just it's just a very cool thing. So anyway, black holes are awesome. Um, yeah, so I think those are the questions you asked. I hope that we I answered them well. And uh, thanks for asking.